All right, which one would you have picked and why? I want to hear about it down below in the comment section. I want to know exactly which one you'd pick just from the just from what I showed you. And I also want to know if uh, you changed your mind after watching this video. All right, so before we jump into it, I do, do not fast forward. You guys should hear this information. You don't have to wait till Black Friday morning and go at 6 a.m. to get sweet-ass deals right now at the Home Depot. All right, these tool sets, they've been, they've been, the price has been been for like a week already, okay? And I thought last year I had to show up at five in the morning and wait in line to get sweet deals, you know, and it's not the case at all. All right, these tools are going quick. They've got some reserved to go out Black Friday morning, along with a couple things that aren't wheeled out yet. But for the most part, at least from my understanding and what I've looked at, they're just some random stuff, you know, like really good deals on random stuff that your construction guy might want to stock up on. Saw blades, Diablo blades for like seven, eight dollars. I kind of peeked under the thing and, you know, bits and clamps for 99 cents, just stuff that usually costs a couple dollars slashed by like 50 to 75 percent. OK, so uh, really good stuff going to be coming out in the morning. So you might want to go out for that. But for right now, with this tool, or this uh, video is about unboxing the tools that I bought, power tools, battery operated, and a lot of that stuff uh, is already out there and the price is not going to change. The posters aren't going to change between now and Thursday or Friday morning, okay? Uh, you only have today, I'm posting this on Tuesday, today and tomorrow to shop at Home Depot before Black Friday because they're closed on Thursday. Home Depot only closes on Christmas and Thanksgiving. So, uh Basically, if you're watching this video and you have it in your head that you should probably go stock up, and if you use tools and you use them regularly, regularly, I highly suggest that you do stock up. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I just think about buying a tool and, oh, no, I want to cheap out and not do it right now, or I really, really could do without it, you know, and just sit there struggling without this tool, and I finally got to buy it, and it, it, it's like October or something like that. I hate that, you know? So stock up right now and just get these tools. I highly recommend that you do. I, I did it. I don't even really need them, but I know that it's going to pay off in this next year. Someone's going to lose a drill, break a, break a sawzall. Something's going to happen. So, uh, I'm excited about it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And, uh, as always like subscribe, comment. I'll see you guys. What's up you two? I'm so excited to get into this. So, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video, okay? But I'm just going to clear this up in the beginning. None of these people are paying me for nothing. I'm not that important. And uh, pretty much anything I talk about here is just my hillbilly ass opinion. You don't have to agree with it. If you actually, you know, kind of disagree with something or you have different kind of facts than I bring, please comment right below. God, I'm out of breath just from one jump. But <clears throat> anyway, we're getting ready to get into this. So here's what here's what we did. I bought this rigid pack for let's see, it was four hundred and forty nine dollars. This is Black Friday stuff. I'm sure you noticed that from the title somewhere. Yeah, this is Black Friday stuff. Four hundred forty nine dollars for this. It comes with a sawzall. And this is rigid here. Sawzall, um, a circular saw, hammer drill, impact flashlight, and I got to pick two tools. So. One of the main reasons I wanted to wait till uh, Black Friday was just to kind of get a this uh, oscillating tool, the multi-tool, and this uh, this is just a cool tool I don't have yet. Actually, I've got a couple, but not battery powered. And uh, I just really like using battery powered tools for the stuff that I get into. All right, and then uh, I didn't have a, I don't have a jigsaw yet, so I was gonna get another grinder just because I use grinders a lot. But uh, I decided to go with a jigsaw just because I don't have it yet. And I know I've got I, uh, one of my guys that works for me does a lot. He used to do a lot of flooring. So he says that comes in handy for that. And I got a whole flip house to put together. So, uh, you know, I figured I'll just get that and get excited about it. Um, all right. And we got this uh, Ryobi here. And I bought this for one of my guys. And uh, just because I get, a, I get a discount on it and things like that. Uh, just a military discount, really. But um, I bought this for him, and this right here, it's kind of like that right there, uh, except you don't get to pick two free tools. This one came with a circular saw, uh, sawzall, the oscillating tool, 
and a uh, impact and a regular drill there. Uh, I think a flashlight too of some sort. But anyway, we're gonna unbox these things because I can't wait. I can't keep talking about it. I just got these nice little deals. That's really all. Um, somewhere in this video, I'm gonna post this and why I picked this versus some other stuff. Cause you gotta be careful. Gonna have to be careful out here, Black Friday shopping. Got this set right here. It's a 50 piece. 25 bucks, right? Check this shit out. This 106 piece, same kind of stuff as some other stuff I'm buying. Same price. You okay? Yeah, thanks. Be careful. <laughs> Cause you gotta be careful for those deals at Home Depot on Black Friday. They've got, like, I mean, I could have, I could have had all this stuff on my cart and then just walked around in a couple aisles, and I did, and put some stuff back because I found basically, you know, like, I had, I had a 50 piece, a 50 piece set, and I basically ended up getting a 106 piece set for like four extra dollars. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta definitely look around. Already all in the bag. All right, nicer than I thought. Okay. All right, you're getting a D plus rating on the bag opening. Yes. I'm more excited about this <laughs> than the first time I lowered the dang bass tracker in the water. <laughs> All right, before we go on, I just want to give you guys this little piece of information I found. So I'm going to put up on the screen right now a picture by a, by a gentleman named Clint DeBauer. And uh, he made this picture here, and it just kind of demonstrates some of the uh, manufacturers and, you know, what companies make them and things like that. So basically, DeWalt is owned by Black & Decker, as you can see over here, um, who also owns Porter Cable and Stanley. And then over here we have Ryobi, Rigid, and Milwaukee, and they're all manufactured by the same Hong Kong-based company. All right, that company's called Tektronic Industries. And then uh, we also have Makita, and that's kind of a standalone company, along with Hitachi, who I believe is now owned by Metabo. All right, and that's just a little bit of information I wanted to give you guys uh, before, we, before we get right into this. And uh, I start unboxing these tools. All right, we're going to start with my favorite, the one I'm most excited about here, and that is the oscillating tool, the multi-tool, the multitasker. Uh, probably another name, probably the correct name, I'm forgetting to call it, but this thing here, it's got a locking mechanism, and that's right on the bottom here. Either way, we'll engage it, dead center locks it. So this tool seems pretty well put together. I'm not going to lie, when I took it out of the package and it asked me to like lock it down, as you can see right here, I was a little bit confused. See how that pops right off? But there's actually a bright side to that, and that's that you can buy multiple heads for this thing to turn it into a number of different tools, and I was completely unaware of that. And I almost bought the Milwaukee set just because I really wanted the multi-tool, I'm sure I mentioned that earlier, and I really doubt that the Milwaukee one has that many uh, different things so I can buy um, Wow, it actually shows it right there in the tip I didn't even notice that but yeah you can buy a bunch of different heads for it I know one of them is like a roto tool for drywall um, shoot I couldn't couldn't really tell you what that one's a Dremel so a bunch of different things we can do here so this just pops on and off real easy engages well um, a little flashlight down here you can engage, but the trigger engages it on its own. So here's how you remove the blade here. You just kind of pop that up. Don't be uh, discouraged by the arrows right there. That's, for some reason, they point that way. Maybe they're just pointing to you to use this and find it. But anyway, it's pretty simple. You pop that up, put your, put your palm right on the back there, and what this does is pulls this out here. Straighten that out and take this. So this will accept the circle or... It will also accept, I believe it will accept the one with the little hole right here that kind of slides because a lot of them just slide around these days. So I believe it will accept that. 
and then uh, if it doesn't, this adapter might be the might be the tool you need. So you might want to keep that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that in one of the many uh, little little pouches inside of that bag that they gave me. All right, and then uh, obviously you can put this on. Oh, this goes this way, and uh, this is this is for flush cuts. So this is something that you're going to use. Uh, probably for doorways, if you're doing flooring, you need to cut out the jams or something like that. This is a real good flush cut. So you can just walk that right along the ground. And uh, that'll help you right along a piece of flooring if that's what you're cutting to. A lot of people put the flooring down and then go off of that. So this is going to be my favorite tool of all the ones that I've got here just because I haven't owned a battery operated multi-tool yet so I'm super excited about this one all right moving on we've got the sawzall so that's how you take the blade out just this little knob here pretty simple it's the same way you put it in I oh my, I always put the blade in this way I know a lot of people who put the blade in this way they like it for flush cuts or something like that things like that around doors whatever uh, I don't know what this is yet let me put that back in the way I like it I feel like people who put the blade in the other way are, are complete weirdos probably murderers but anyway I don't know what this does yet that much I have not figured out alright so this one's pretty simple to understand Aside from whatever that is that I don't know, you got your lock and your unlock here. If you don't want to use it, you keep it on lock. You want to use it, hit unlock, and it just pulls at will. It also has a flashlight button, like I think all of these ones do. And then this right here, see how it sounds a little different and it works a little different? That's orbital. Okay. Now orbital is better for demolition and that's probably it so when you don't need to cut real pretty you just need to get through it orbital is supposed to be the way to go all right so if you want to go through something a little cleaner if you're going to be cutting uh maybe like a maybe like a flush cut for uh, a door you just framed up and you need to cut the bottom plate off that's probably this is your standard sawzall okay this is how most of them run in a straight run, okay? So this is, runs this way, right? In and out. Orbital chops at it like that. Okay, all right, that one, that one's pretty much settled. All right. All right, the next tool is the other one that I chose. This one's got a lot to teach about, okay? So, basically, wow, I didn't even know that one. So, that I just kind of learned that one, honestly. This one's obviously got the flash as normal, but, so this, this gets it running, right? You push this button and let go, and it'll keep it kind of moving. And you don't really have to worry about the handle, and you can run it with two hands, and then one click it will uh, pull it off, make it stop, right? So it's also got this knob here, and that knob adjusts the blade forward and backwards. I haven't yet figured out, you know, I, I don't use these tools very often, so I haven't yet figured out what the purpose of that is. If you know the purpose, uh, please put that in the comments below, and uh, maybe I'll pin it. All right, next, we can actually speed this up with our with our finger here on the top. So we can just roll that forward. Pop that. Slow it down all the way up. If you just put it on line, line start, it's probably going to be a good spot to keep it. But you could slow it, you could slow it down if need be. Internet all the way to off so this won't turn on if you have it on off obviously all right so we also have this this little vacuum 
or this little attachment that you attach to a shop vac, right? Because a lot of times, uh, you know, being able to see your pencil line and your marks, especially on something you're trying to get so fine with a jigsaw like this is very important. So if you hook the shop vacs on, you can definitely uh, not be working around so much sawdust and make it a little easier to see that line and make your cuts a little better. So that's pretty cool. Not sure if I'll need it very much personally, but for most people, I'm sure that's kind of helpful. Um, so then we've got the blade switch. Just kind of works like a sawzall. This feels a little sticky to me. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but it kind of hits a pause right there. And then, yeah, see, I don't know if that's how that should be. Or if maybe I need to warm it up first or what. But, but anyway, that's how you uh, kind of do it just like a sawzall. All right, so what we have here, this little lever underneath, is to adjust the degrees, right? So what you actually need to do is pull, or push forward and then turn, right? So push forward, turn, pull back, and you kinda put it wherever you want, okay? Um, a little, I'll be honest though, a little difficult to keep, like that's centered right now, so that's to zero. Like I said, I don't work with these all the time, but that seems a little tough to keep to keep it uh, perfectly square for me, and it's kind of got a little play. It's just a little bit, and I, you know, jigsaws are not really meant for cutting uh, through anything real deep, so I imagine with it being square, it's not too big of a deal, and if you really needed it perfectly square, you could go ahead and check that with a, with a square, like a speed square or something similar. But yeah, so that's, it's definitely got some degrees you can put on it. And uh, that probably, I think that wraps up. This one was complicated, so there's a lot going on in this one. But I like it. <laughs> okay. All right, so next we're going to go over the skill saw. Well, that's what I know it as. What's it called? Circular saw? Something like that. However you know it. Uh, first thing right off the bat I'm not real excited about is this is like plastic you know and like these are kind of I, I kind of expect it to be a little more durable you know a lot of construction guys are going to be the ones buying packages so valuable like this and you know you, 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 hit a, you hit a cut you set it down and, and a lot of times you just drop it on the roof or whatever you're doing you know and you're you kind of just set it wherever it goes and it rests on this at an angle you know like it'll always sit like that so that thing is probably going to take a little abuse down here and uh, that's that's about the only thing that i'm not real excited to see on here all right so this this saw comes with a allen wrench up here as most of the cordless do right up in the top pull that on out Okay, it's also got a nice big button. I like I like the button on this one because it's easy to push. And then you go ahead and once you, once it locks, you can start start loosening. Usually saws are I thought saws were backwards threaded. That this one's threaded like what you would expect, like lefty loosey. That's weird. Usually I thought they were backwards. I could be wrong though. Who knows? So all right. So for the blade. You want to pay attention to these arrows here, right? It shows the direction. That's that's an arrow and that's an arrow. You can also find that same arrow right here on that on that uh, blade that I expect to break off in a couple couple months. The blade guard. All right. See how they match? That's how you know that uh, you got the blade going the correct direction. Also, if you're this is for chopping wood, obviously you can turn it backwards for vinyl and things like that. Probably use a different kind of saw if you're going to do that, though. So, you know, another way is just as long as these are pointing upwards because this is the direction of motion, these will be fine, okay? So, all right, so we're going to throw that on there and then this, and it's going to be righty tighty, just as most would expect. We're going to push that button down again. And we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it on there, pretty dang good. We're not gonna hurt our hand over it, 
We're going to put it on there nice though. And then we're going to put this back every single time. Put it right back. Catches right inside there. Push it nice and tight. Make sure it's all the way in. Okay? All right. The next, next thing we have on here. This actually goes to 56 degrees. And it's got a nice little click. I like, I like how that clicks. It clicks right at 45 and uh, your common, the 50, the 15 degree, the 22 and a half, things like that. So that I like. I've never used a, a 56. Uh, if you've used 56 degree, comment below. Tell me what you've, you've used it for. So here's what I like about the depth setter also. Just lift that up, right? Now you can actually see the marks here. You know, so you can set this to, if, if you know you're cutting through plywood and your plywood's a half inch, you can set this just a smidgen deeper than a half and then drop this down and tighten it. And then you know you're just barely going to be poking out right here. Okay. At least that's without trying it. All right. And then I guess just to uh, pop it in and run it, right? It's got the safety, obviously. And this can be a bit annoying when you first start using these battery oper these battery operated circular saws, but uh, after a little after a little bit you get pretty used to it. So you just pop that in right there. Right through a knot. <laughs> Take two. Okay. I already had a little fun cutting that, but we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this circular saw for you. Okay. Not quite through. So, I have it set, as you can see, just above an inch and a half, which is the thickness of a 2x4. Inch and 5 eighths actually now. Okay. Okay, I'm not liking this saw. Two bars. Something's not right. Saw might be junk. Let's see. Make sure that blade's still tight. Yeah. That blade's on there. Let's see if we got a two by four laying around. All right, so here we have the hammer drill. All right, I tighten this on. This kind of just loosens and tightens this way. I did it with two hands, so. Anyhow, you just put this on right here. Get that little spring in there. Just tightens right on, okay? And then this here. Oh, I'm gonna get the battery in yet. Right now it's on a uh, setting on one. Uh, most people I think or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was on one. Yeah, a little tough to turn. I don't know if you want it on one or 110 or whatever. It's got, it's got settings here, one and two. And it's also got settings here for drill, for drive, for hammer, but dial. Okay. So this thing, pretty cool. I like that it has, uh, you know, a spot for your bits back here. Spot for this right here is where you screw on your clips. If you're right-handed, you want it on this side. Left-handed, you're going to want it over there, right, for the lefties, for the righties. All right.
So we're going to open up the Ryobi one and we're going to check this out. Main reason I want to open this is because I want to kind of, I want to use that saw and compare them a little bit. Um, so let's dive right into it. Here we are. Zipper is definitely a little easier on this one. Okay, we've got the drill here. It's a regular old drill. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to kind of review these as we go along here. So let me get a battery out. Here's your here's your charger set. Oh, that's right. They got the stick chargers. I forgot about that. I don't know what the real name is. <laughs> I just kind of made up that stick charger thing. Kind of makes sense though. If you don't think about it, right? So, these are real tiny batteries. Now, Ryobi makes a lot of tools. A lot of tools. This one does not come with... Doesn't look like it comes with a with a reader on it. Tell me how much battery's left. Pretty standard stuff. Put it on drill usually. Uh, one and two. So you see when two's there, it's a lot faster than one. Okay. All right, a little spot for stuff here, and this is also a magnet. Hold a few little little screws. If you've got some zip screws or something, you're doing maybe a gutter or whatever. You know, you got a few things you want to set on there. You can. They make a couple different drills with bigger pads on them. Let's see if uh, some of the other ones come. That seems like a pretty simple drill, though. You know, you get what you pay for a little bit. Oh, this battery comes with a. Uh, Definitely, okay, so you can get a reading on that one. This is just a cheap battery. I didn't realize there was two different ones in here. Okay, so this is one of the bigger ones. I know they make a massive one, and you can't kill that thing. So now we're on to the impact. Let's see here. Same thing. Got a little drill on here. So, just one automatic speed on this one. Seems like it'll run pretty good though. No, no sure way to tell until you actually drive something with it. Pop out as normal. None of that special click thing. Seems like you have to uh, actually pull that on there to set it. So, I'm gonna pull it and push it down. Then it's good. Okay. Pretty good. All right, now let's get into this saw here. This is kind of what I wanted to get into. All right, also the plastic plastic guard on this one. Ooh, this one takes a much smaller blade. So this is a smaller skill saw. I'm sure they make bigger ones. This, yeah, this is not a uh, typical. Was this one seven and a quarter? Ah, so this rigid, this rigid came with a full size blade on it. I think the Milwaukee one I have might be smaller. This might be a five inch blade though. Let me see if this one comes with it. Yeah, it does. I think my Milwaukee takes a six and a quarter or something like that. This is, yeah, this is five and a half. This is even smaller than the Milwaukee one. This is a tiny one. Definitely kind of not not doing uh not doing a whole lot of work kind of thing with it you know not not something you're gonna want to buy if you own a company in my opinion um so yeah let's see here we've got the usually the tools up in there i think or oh here it is in the back okay now you'll notice one thing different the saw on this one is actually visible for a right-hander versus a right-hander having to look over on this one 
So this is more set up like a worm drive than uh, your standard circular saw. All right now, button right here, little button on there. It's a little guy. Go push that. See which way it goes. Yeah, there we go. Righty tighty gets it off. Leave that bottom one on there. Kind of the debate's already settled, for me anyway, just because, let's see which way these turns. Shows the blade going the, that way. Right, see these match? Okay. Lefty Lucy to tighten this one. Okay. All right, and then this one in the back again. So, I'm give this one a go. That's a weird spot for the battery. I didn't really realize that this one came with a cheaper saw. See, this is the one I don't like. The one with the thumb I like is no problem. This one you gotta push to the side. It's kind of a pain. All right, but anyway, uh, this one just sets to uh, 50 degrees here if you want, otherwise, you got your zero, and as far as this goes, I just, it actually tells you here, most of them do, a little hard to see on most of them, so there's an inch and a half, go a little bit past that, let's chop a little bit off this wood, let's see how it goes, honestly it cuts pretty good. That does cut pretty dang good, I'd say. Yeah. Still barely got all the way down. All right. All right, so I'd say that's pretty good. Nice little saw, for sure. Definitely got its, got its power still. <laughs> All right, got this little flashlight here. Not very powerful. One setting kind of deal. No way to adjust this, it doesn't look like. It is what it is, it's pretty cool. And we got the saws all here. You know what, this is still a nice little starter kit. The drill's pretty simple. Oh, there's something else in here. The oscillating tool, is it? All right, forgot about that. <clears throat> so this is still a nice little kit. You're gonna get, you're gonna get your worth out of it. So, I mean, if you're, if you're uh, younger, this is one of your first sets you're gonna be buying. And, uh, Pull that up. If this is one of your first sets you're going to be buying, I'd say it's a good idea. Okay, this just automatically locks over there, so it works. You can put that there, so it won't go. All right. Uh, you can't exactly see the change, the thing inside of there. You, there's no need for it because your your pull your change is right here. So, just look look down in there. I'm, well, I can't even see it, and I still got it the first try, but pretty simple there. Self-explanatory. I mean, seems seems pretty cool, though. This will uh, this will definitely get get the job done for whatever you need. Uh, it's kind of bland, isn't it? Huh? The whole thing? No. Okay, just what I said there. 
just no, just the tools are bland. Oh, they don't got yeah. like sauce on them. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, pretty simple. If you're just starting out, I feel like this might be a good set. Pretty cheap. It's gonna last you a few years. And you know what? If if you decide this is something you want to do, you want to stick with construction. You want to try to you know learn learn and maybe start your own business one day then you should probably upgrade to some better tools. Or if you're like a household kind of do-it-yourselfer, I would say Ryobi's pretty good for that. You know, you're gonna get a better deal. How many times are you gonna buy a drill here and a circular saw there and a sawzall here? That stuff will start to add up. You know, so I would say it's pretty safe just to get this. Cause you can buy anything. You get one of these big batteries, all of a sudden, you know, Next, you know, there will be things that this kit doesn't include that you're going to want. All of a sudden, you might want a, a blower for your yard. They've got it. They've got some crazy stuff. Chainsaws, uh, weed whackers, fans, sanders, water pumps, uh, water pumps or something like that. I mean, you name it. Ryobi, if, if, it, if it's made with a cord, there's a good chance Ryobi makes it for a battery. I mean, there really is. So, uh you know, definitely a good set of tools still. And uh, one of my workers had his set. He probably had the better set than this. But he had his set for, uh, he said, seven years. And a lot of his tools still work. He still brings his multitasker on to my job site. So, I mean, they definitely do last. Let's see. Last, we got the uh, multitasker here. This one's got a few different settings. Let me see what that does. Okay, so that's slow. Number one and two, those are slow. That adds it up. This uh, looks like a lock. See a lock? Oh, so you can... Yeah, that thing's got the same thing that uh, the jigsaw had. Press it, press this button, and then you can let go. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see about replacing this one. It looks, it looks like it's not the quick change. You need the uh, Allen wrench for it. Might have to grab it off the saw. I'm not sure if I, if I like that. I don't see it on here. I'll open this up anyway. Looks like it's in here, so that's good. Okay, so it's got the tool. I'm wondering where you place it. Is there a spot for it? It's like right here. There you go. Okay, I dig it. It's got. It's even got a uh, latch in it. So, you put it in this way. There we go. That's exciting. That's better. Okay, now you can just loosen this. And this one takes a whole circle, so I'm assuming you gotta take this thing completely off. This doesn't accept the uh, the universal or whatever. It's got a lot of threads on it. Come on now. There we are. Yeah. Okay, put it somewhere. Put it where you want, straight, obviously. Screw it on. It's kind of annoying, won't lie. Here's slow. One. Seems pretty good. I've got one that kind of starts off slow like that. I'm not sure if you can tell the the start on it's kind of kind of slow on the buildup, not seriously slow, but a little bit. 
I've got one like that, and that one hasn't failed me yet, so. And that wraps it up. That was the Ryobi. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I think you can probably find another one. Oh, right here and here. There was one here the whole time. There's one there. There's a few other videos if you enjoyed these. Click on one of them. All right, thank you, guys.